I know that in the past you've let yourself down, but tomorrow can be a different day. All you have to do is just get to that finish line. All you have to do is just get through the day sober. If you have to cheat a little bit and if you have to take a couple of naps, do it. Deep breath, inhale. Deep breath, exhale. All right, welcome back to Getting Sober, dot, 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 again. My name is Jay, and today we're gonna talk about sobriety can be scary. <laughs> but first, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel, and make sure that you give it a thumbs up at some point and leave a comment for either me or somebody else. It's very helpful that you leave comments because sometimes you have relevant life experience that some people may definitely relate to, and it's helpful also to comment on other people's comments and provide service and support to their journey. All right, let's get started. First, if you haven't yet, make sure that you catch up with my last episode. It was a very big one that I'm very, very proud of, and that was episode number 90, which is the 25 benefits of quitting alcohol for 90 days. 90 days is a very important goal, in my opinion, because it helps you establish a lot of positive momentum and keep three months between you and your last drink gives you the amount of momentum that you need to finally say goodbye to alcohol forever, if that's your goal. But what I'm asking for is if you can help that video to go viral. And what I need from you is adding it to one of your folders. So either adding it to your watch later folder or what's even more helpful is if you create a public folder and add it to that. Maybe like a sobriety folder or sober coach or sober inspiration, whatever you wanna call it, and then make that folder public so that other people can see it on your page. And then that way, YouTube and Google will know that that video is trending and it's worth sharing. So make sure that you go back to that video and not only rewatch it, but leave some positive comments for the people that are struggling to get to the 90 day mark and make sure that you share it externally to either Twitter, to Facebook, to Reddit, or by adding it to a public YouTube folder. So today we're gonna talk about sobriety scary. <laughs> if you agree with that, comment below. What I mean by sobriety being kind of scary is it's, it's, it's a big lifestyle change. And for a lot of people, um, I read all the comments and I respond to all the comments if I can, but also too, I try my best to comment um, in response to your comment. And if I don't respond, then don't take it personally. I maybe just don't have the time to give it a full comment or for some reason, your comment didn't go through. So always make sure, make sure to check back and see if your comment has stuck or if you need to edit it or whatever the case may be. But with that episode, I'm very proud of it. I took a lot of time to edit that video for you and chop it up into chapters that you can see down in the description below of that video. And you can also skip ahead and skip around because in the top left-hand corner, I gave you a visual marker of the numbers of each chapter, which there are 25 and a conclusion to that video. So it's very helpful. And I think it'll provide inspiration for you for many days and many months and maybe many years to come. So I thank you for helping that video to go viral and to reach a global audience of people that are trying to get sober and stay sober. Um, so today with uh, sobriety being scary, um, it can be because it's a big lifestyle change. You know, when we when we spend so much time as adults, like I don't know about you, but uh, you know, I started drinking when I was about 21. And you may say like, well, you know, being 18 is legally an adult, but like, are you really an adult? Like, yeah, you can get drafted into war. You can buy lottery tickets, you can buy pornography, you can buy cigarettes in some states, but are you still really an adult? Can you really still make, and are you capable of fully making adult decisions or permanent decisions for the rest of your life um, coming from a place of maturity and well-rounded experience? And you know, I don't know. But when we get to the age of 21, you're now allowed to drink in all states in the United States. In some countries, it's different. Some countries, um, alcohol is not as taboo and they have a little bit healthier relationships with alcohol and drinking and how to approach alcohol as treatment. But here in the United States, we don't necessarily have all those options and all those programs. And some of the methods for sobriety men are kind of taboo and looked down upon and aren't necessarily options that we wanna take ourselves up on, like AA or the 12 step programs or whatever it is. So then we find ourselves reading books or watching our favorite YouTubers and commenting below, right? 
But um, so in that, I really hope that this channel is providing a service to you and is helpful to you. And I very much value all of your comments and all of your support and how this channel is growing ex exponentially. And uh, it really, really makes me feel good. It really makes me feel motivated to continue pumping out these episodes for you and helping to find relatable topics for you to grasp onto and make you feel like you're not alone on this journey. It really makes me feel good to know that you relate to these videos. But when we talk about getting sober and staying sober, it is a huge lifestyle change. You know, when we turn 21, all of a sudden now we're allowed to drink, but it doesn't, you know, alcohol doesn't come with a label, a warning label with regard to the recommended amount of alcohol you should consume. It doesn't really educate you on the, the, the negative aspects of alcohol and alcoholism and how addicting that it can be. And nobody really sits you down unless, you know, you had a great set of parents, a great community that you're surrounded with. People don't really sit there and take the time to educate you on the downfalls of alcohol and alcoholism. So we have to rely on maybe YouTubers or books or magazines or whatever it is or whatever research that we can find online. And by the time that we go looking for the information, it's probably too late. And alcohol definitely has its hooks in us. So when we turn 21, when we're more of an adult age, we're still at that point in college. A lot of us gain whatever knowledge that we have of drinking or more so the limits of how much that we can possibly drink in a college atmosphere or just from our friends um, who are also young and don't really know what they're talking about. Then we end up going a decade or two decades or a whole lifetime habitually drinking through our lives, through our good experiences, through our bad experiences, using it as a singular tool for a variety of circumstances, whether it be celebratory or whether it be where attending a funeral or we're celebrating a birthday or bar mitzvah or whatever it is, getting married, engaged, a nice vacation, alcohol is always there. And not only is it always there, but it's every time you turn on the TV, it's every time they open up a magazine, it's on a billboard, it's being promoted to us by our favorite musicians, by our favorite artists, it's everywhere. It's the go-to thing to do in every circumstance, in every situation. And then we end up getting so used to it that we don't even think that it's a possibility that it's causing harm and damage in our lives and in the relationships that we have with other people. Alcohol is always there. It's there for our relationships. It's there for our family gatherings. It's there when we go to the movies. It's there when we go to the beach. It's there when we're watching our favorite sport and we're being told that it's the go-to thing to do for any and all circumstances. But that's just not true. And then we create a dependency on this thing to make us feel like it's allowing us to be our best selves. When in reality, typically at the end of the night, we don't feel like our best selves, do we? And especially the next day, we definitely tend not to feel like our best selves. It's certainly a lifestyle change. And I always talk about trying to remove alcohol isn't always the key to success. We have to replace alcohol with better decisions instead of the constant worst decisions that we are putting ourselves in. Whether it being going to the gym and exercising, working out, going for bike rides, going for walks and making those healthy decisions. Or whether it being just eating healthier, replacing the, the foods that we're, we were used to consuming on a regular basis as a solution for sobering up at the end of the night. It is a lifestyle change, removing it from the social situations. I know that a lot of people that comment below don't know how to be in social situations. I was at the uh, bar this past weekend and um, an interesting situation happened. Towards the end of the night, um, some girl randomly that I, I don't know, I don't, I don't talk to, randomly walked up to me and asked me for weed and I don't smoke. <laughs> so she asked me for weed and I was like, uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't smoke and uh, I don't drink either. And she was like, what do you mean you don't drink? And then, so I pulled out my bottle of kombucha and I said, yeah, I don't drink. I, uh, I, bring, my, I bring my own kombucha from home. And she said, you go, you go to a bar and you don't drink? That's crazy. And then she walked away. So I was really happy with myself and the people that are around me that also know that I don't drink to be able to talk to this person and also maybe directly or indirectly provide support and encouragement and inspiration for this person to let them know that it's possible that you can be out and not drink. And it wasn't it wasn't a matter of like, well, I was on a date or something and I was a designated driver. It was just a personal decision that I made for myself. But when I talk about, uh, which will be a future episode, the big five, right? I always talk about the big five improvements that you can expect when you get sober. And that's physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and financially. When 
you feel like you are confident in that you have improved with the big five, that would potentially be a time that you could expose yourself to some of your prior hangouts and your prior places that you would like to go to and socialize at. And as the weather continues to get warmer and as we get uh, start getting towards summer months, there's definitely gonna be a lot of temptation for backyard barbecues, going to the beach, social situations. And as the restrictions from COVID start to get lifted, we're gonna start to attend more concerts and more social gatherings. There's gonna be more people around. There's gonna be more opportunities for us to be tempted by alcohol. But just because you've made the decision to get sober a week ago, doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready to go back out and to socialize. And you might say like, well, when am I gonna know? You'll know. Just like when you know that you're in love or you know that this relationship's gonna work out for you, you know that you're in a job that you like working at or that you're in a community that you like to live in or that you're in a, in a house or an apartment that you really like living in. When you know, you know. When you feel better physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and financially, that you've made enough progress moving forward and you've distanced yourself far enough from alcohol, you will know and be confident that you are able to tackle being sober and staying sober and making definitive statements like, I don't drink or I don't drink anymore. It's as simple as that. You'll be able to confidently turn down the temptation of alcohol. You'll be able to confidently go to those barbecues and those social gatherings and those picnics and those parties even and socialize with people and Remember the details of the conversations. They might write, they might not remember, <laughs> but you'll remember the details of the conversation. And yeah, the next time that you go out, maybe they won't remember the conversation that they had, but you'll remember the conversation that you guys had. And you'll express patience with those people along their journey. Maybe you'll wanna inspire people directly by encouraging them to get sober, or maybe just through your strength and solidarity, you will be an inspiration to those people. You'll start to show people that you can be sober in social situations, that you can say no to alcohol, that you can have a really good time without alcohol. And that's something that I have at this point in my life and I didn't think that it was possible. And I know that every single one of you that are struggling, struggling with alcohol don't think it's possible. And some of you might even think that like, what's the point? What's the point of getting sober really? I have to change something about me. And anytime that we're confronted with change, especially a big change, like a lifestyle change, we are naturally resistant to having to want to, or wanting to having to do something different because we have our systems. We already have our habits. We already have the friends that we have. We already have the person's house that we go for the game or the place that we go, we go to for our social gatherings. And we lack the confidence in ourselves because we have constantly seen a history of not being able to depend on ourselves. And that's something that I wanna encourage you to be able to break through and be able to change. Whether it's just getting through some, for some of you, you probably haven't been sober for just a whole week or maybe it's two weeks, or maybe it's a month and you keep struggling. You get there's just that one stressful day at day 25, or for a lot of you, you start to feel good after a few days. You start to, once the hangover and all the dehydration has left your body and you start to feel more like yourself, and then the one nice day hits and the sun's shining and you had a great day at work and your coworkers going out afterwards and they're going to happy hour and you're going, they're going to the happy hour spot that you have all of these memories and all these flashbacks start to set in. And you think about all the great conversations that you had there and some of the bad conversations you had there <laughs> and all the good times that you've had. And you wonder, am I going to be able to stay sober? And you're, you're struggling in silence, which is another episode that I put out there. You haven't had the transparency. You haven't put the transparency out there with your friends, with your family, with your coworker, and sticking to your goal of just saying maybe like, I'm just taking a week off or I'm taking, a, I'm taking two weeks off or I'm doing a sober cleanse for a month or whatever the case may be. You don't necessarily have to justify to anybody what your reasoning is, but be confident in your decision and know that you can go out and you can socialize. You can be there. I know that for me, I was always I was always nervous about like what what am I supposed to do? I always wanted to have my crutch. I always wanted to just be like holding on to my drink. I always wanted to have something in my hands. And now with this day and age, we don't just have this thing in our hands. We also have this thing in our hands. It's like our little blanket. It's like our little wall in front of us that we hide behind in the absence of 
conversation or something to do or something to talk about. Any time that we have nothing, we're not sure what to talk about or we're not sure how to get through the next couple of seconds of a social interaction, out comes the drink or out comes the phone. And then we're trapped back in that loop and back in that rhythm of habitual habits that we still need to break through on. And I know that for myself, even though I'm sober, I pull my phone out a lot, but also mostly I'm pulling on my phone to respond to your comments, so don't judge. <laughs> but I know that for a lot of us, it definitely is a struggle. And for a lot of us, we're not sure what are we gonna do with our free time? And I always talk about the importance of making sure that you have a schedule, making sure that you're tackling your to-do list, all the things, that, all the ambitions that you had, whether it be tackling books, like is sitting down reading a book gonna be anything close to going to a, a big rager or a keg party or a work function where there's an open bar? Probably not, comparatively speaking. But knowing that you're going to wake up tomorrow and that the future you, which is just a morning away, is counting on you today, right now, to be the person that you hope to be in the future. That person is waiting to wake up knowing that they can count on you today. And don't you wanna be able to count on yourself? Don't you wanna be able to look at yourself yesterday or a week ago or a month ago or 90 days ago and say, I'm really glad that I had my best intentions in mind back then. I'm really glad that I was looking out for my future self back then and then I put my foot down and I stopped all this negative momentum and broke free of my addictions to alcohol. And I started to fall in love with myself again. I started to get interested in my hobbies again. I started to shore up the distance between my personal relationships and my family relationships and maybe my professional relationships. But I started to crack open all those books that I bought from the bookstore and then I never read. <laughs> if, you, if you relate to that, comment below. I tend to go to bookstores and then I buy the books and then I put them on the bookshelf and then I never touch them ever again because most of the time I was just getting shit-faced. Being able to schedule out all the things that you wanna do and really start to tackle all of your to-do lists, your spring cleanings, the reorganizing your house, the dusting off of yourself and your mind, your body, your soul, and your spirit, getting back into the gym and starting to make some positive momentum. For some of you, it's just it's, it's as hard as just waking up tomorrow sober, just having 24 hours of sobriety. And I know that you're out there. I know that a lot of you are commenting and you're emailing me and you're letting me know that you're back to day zero again. And there's nothing to be afraid of. I know that in the past you've let yourself down, but tomorrow can be a different day. All you have to do is just get to that finish line. All you have to do is just get through the day sober. If you have to cheat a little bit and if you have to take a couple of naps, do it. I already took a nap before this episode and I'm feeling tired. I'm definitely gonna take a nap after this episode before I edit it. Whatever you have to do, if you have to go to bed earlier, do it. If you have to wake up a little bit later, do it. But remember that self-care is important. It's important to fall back in love with yourself. If you wanna be the friend that you wanna be, if you wanna be the partner that you wanna be, if you wanna be the spouse, if you wanna be the parent that you wanna be, you have to make a big sacrifice. And in my opinion, that big sacrifice is alcohol. There's definitely no way I would be doing this channel. There was definitely no way if I hadn't have made that decision for myself, Two and a half years ago, I wouldn't be here making this channel for you. And I know that for a lot of you, this channel means a lot to you in your journey and in your process of recovery. So just think if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't be here for you and with you. And you'd be having to watch somebody else's channel. <laughs> so with that, good luck on your journey. Make sure that you like this video and make sure that you leave a comment below for either me or somebody else. And I will see you in the next video.